Let's do an example problem involving non-disjunction. So this problem states that the gene for ear size is located on the X chromosome. A man with big ears and a woman with small ears have a son with Klinefelter syndrome with the genotype XXY who has big ears. Determine what non-disjunction events could have occurred. Big ears is dominant to small ears. So the first thing I like to do is look at the genotype of the parents. We're told that the man has big ears, and since he's a male, his genotype is going to be XY. We're told that big ears is dominant. So if we use the letter E, then he would have a big E allele. The mother has small ears, and small ears is recessive because we're told that big ears is dominant. Therefore, she's going to have two little e, e alleles, and since she's a female, she's going to have two X chromosomes. We're also told that the son has Klinefelter syndrome, which is a genotype of XXY, and he has big ears, which are dominant. So we know that his genotype is XXY, and he must have at least one big E allele if he has big ears. We also know that since he's a son, he's a male, and therefore he must have received his Y chromosome from his father. We also know that the mother must have contributed an X chromosome with the little e, because that's the only allele that she has. So the father contributed the Y chromosome and the mother contributed the little e allele. So where did the X with the big E come from? Well, the father is the only one that has the dominant allele. So he must have contributed that to his son. As a result, the father contributed both the X chromosome with the big E and the Y chromosome to his son. Therefore, non-disjunction must have occurred in the father. We just have to figure out, did it occur in meiosis one or two? Well, let's draw it out. Non-disjunction could have occurred in meiosis one or two, but we're not sure yet. Let's draw out meiosis 1. If this is our cell in prophase, we have an X chromosome with the X big E allele, and we also have a Y chromosome. If this cell was in metaphase 1 during meiosis 1, we would expect homologous chromosomes to split apart along the metaphase plate. But remember, if this is non-disjunction in meiosis 1, then we expect the homologous chromosomes to stay together. So both homologous chromosomes will go into one cell. Our resulting cells will look like this. On the left, we have both chromosomes, and on the right, the cell is empty. Then, during metaphase 2, the cell is going to split apart, and this time, sister chromatids are going to split apart. So the resulting four gametes have two gametes with the X, E, and Y chromosomes and two gametes that are missing chromosomes. So if the father contributed one of the two gametes on the left, then he could have been the reason why the son has Klinefelter syndrome. Let's now look at what the cell would look like in meiosis two. So if we have the same cell, but this time, the homologous chromosomes split apart normally during meiosis 1. Then in both cells, we would have chromosomes. On the left, we have the X big E chromosome, and on the y, right, we have the Y chromosome. Then, we would expect the cells to split apart during metaphase 2, with the sister chromatids splitting apart. But if there's non-disjunction in meiosis 2, then the sister chromatids will not split apart. If these two sister chromatids don't split apart, then one gamete will have two X big E chromosomes. Or, if we imagine that the sister chromatids of the Y chromosome don't, don't split apart, then one gamete would have two Y chromosomes. But either way, the father could not have contributed an X big E and a Y gamete through meiosis 2.
So the answer is that non-disjunction must have occurred in meiosis I, not in meiosis II. Let's look at another example. A gene for pinky size is found on the X chromosome. Long pinky fingers are dominant to short pinkies. A man with short pinkies and a woman with long pinkies have a daughter with short pinkies. The daughter's genotype is XXX. What non-disjunction events could have occurred? So again, I'm going to start out by writing the genotypes of the parents. We know the father must have an X and a Y chromosome, and we also know that he has short pinkies. We're also told that long pinky fingers are dominant to short pinkies, so he must have the recessive allele, which we are going to indicate with the little r. What about the mother? We know that the mother must have two X chromosomes, and she has long pinkies, and long pinky fingers are dominant, so she must have at least one dominant allele but she could be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, so we're going to leave the second allele blank. The daughter's genotype is XXX. We are also told that the daughter has short pinkies, and we know that short pinkies is a recessive allele because long pinky fingers are dominant to short pinkies. Therefore, the daughter must have all three alleles being the recessive allele, because if she had even one dominant allele, then she would have had long pinkies, not short pinkies. So all three X's have the recessive allele. So we can be sure that the father contributed at least one X little r, and not a Y because the daughter is female, and the mother must have contributed at least one little r. So her second allele is an X little r. So if we know that the father contributed an X little r allele, and the mother also contributed an X little r, then the third X little r must have come from a non-disjunction event. But since both parents have the X little r chromosome, non-disjunction could have happened in either parent. What we want to do now is determine if the non-disjunction happened in meiosis 1 or 2. But let's try to recall what happens in each cell division. In meiosis 1, homologous chromosomes are supposed to separate, but if there's non-disjunction, they don't. If non-disjunction occurs in meiosis 1 of the father, he will contribute both the X little r and Y because those are homologous chromosomes. But the child is a daughter, she's female, not male. So meiosis 1 non-disjunction could not have occurred in the father because then the child would have been a son, since he would have received the Y chromosome. If there was non-disjunction in meiosis one of the mother, the mother would have given both her chromosomes. Therefore, the daughter would have had an X big R allele, but she doesn't, because if she did, then she would have had long pinky fingers, but we are told that she has short pinky fingers. Therefore, we can be 100% sure that non-disjunction did not occur in meiosis 1 of the father or the mother. But what about meiosis 2? Well, non-disjunction in meiosis 2 means that sister chromatids do not separate. So let's actually draw out what non-disjunction in meiosis 2 would look like in the dad and the mom. Well, in the dad, we have a cell that has the X little r chromosome and a Y chromosome. During metaphase one, these homologous chromosomes line up next to each other along the metaphase plate. The cell is then going to split apart normally and homologous chromosomes are going to separate. This time, sister chromatids are supposed to separate. However, 
assuming that there is non-disjunction in meiosis 2, sister chromatids are not going to separate. Therefore, if the dad contributed this gamete and the mom contributed an X chromosome with the little r allele, then the daughter could have had three chromosomes with the little r allele. So yes, non-disjunction could have occurred in meiosis two of the father. What about the mother? Well, if we have our cell again, the mother has an X chromosome with the big R allele and an X chromosome with the little r allele. These homologous chromosomes are going to line along the metaphase plate, and when the cell separates, the homologous chromosomes are going to separate. Sister chromatids should then separate during meiosis too, along the metaphase plate. However, if there is non-disjunction in meiosis too, we would expect the sister chromatids to not separate, so they would go into one gamete cell. Our resulting gametes would look like this. So we would have one gamete with two X little r alleles. Therefore, if the mother contributed this gamete and the father contributed an X little r allele, the daughter could have had three X chromosomes with the little r allele. Therefore, we can conclude that non-disjunction could have happened in meiosis II of either the mom or the dad. I hope this video helped.